friends, this is Sam here. Today, we will be discussing about anti-angelal drugs on pharmacology. These are also known as anti-ischemic drugs. In this video, we will be discussing about their mechanism of action, contraindications, indications and their side effects. First of all, for what these anti-angelal drugs are used? These are used to treat angina pectoris, which is a symptom of ischemic heart disease. This ischemic heart disease can also be known as coronary heart disease or coronary artery disease. Now, what is angina pectoris? This is a chest pain occur, which occurs during insufficient pumping of blood to the heart muscles. Okay. This angina can be classified to three types, stable, variant or prismethyl or unstable angina. First of all, what is stable angina? This stable angina can also be known as or called as classical angina typical angina or exertional angina. This, is, this occurs in case of increase of cardiac output in case of physical exercise conditions or also during emotional conditions. This sustains or the pain occurs in a duration of 5 minutes. Okay. Now let's move on to variant or prismethyl angina. This occurs due to coronary vasospasm as a result of a decrease in blood flow. When there is a decrease in blood flow, that causes coronary vasospasm which results in variant or prismethyl angina. Their duration of action or duration of pain may be 15 minutes or more than that. Now, we will move on to the more severe or more complicated form of angina which is unstable angina. This unstable angina occurs when there is complete obstruction of or plaque formation in a blood vessel. This results in unstable angina. When this sustains for a more long duration, it leads to myocardial infarction. Their duration of action is irregular in pattern. It uh, ranges from 15 to 20 minutes. Now let's discuss about the classification of drugs which are used to treat angina pectoris. These are classified to three main classifications. First, vasodilators, which are examples are nitrates. Next, cardiac depressants, which example are beta blockers. Next, here comes calcium channel blockers where the effect of both nitrates and beta blockers comes into action and there are some other drugs which are potassium channel openers example nicorandum and other neuro drugs what happens when this anti angelal drugs doesn't cause any pathology in blood vessels so they are often aided with aspirin or ACE inhibitors So friends, now let's move on to nitrates, their mechanism of action, indication, side effects and their drugs. Okay. So first of all, nitrates, these are vasodilators as we know. So they act on smooth muscle cells. Now the mechanism of action starts when these nitrates enter into the smooth muscles. As they enter into the smooth muscle, they cause increase of nitric oxide and that comes guanylyl cyclase increase which helps in conversion of nitric oxide to cyclic guanosine monophosphate which is CGMP and, and at last it also leads to dephosphorylation of myosin light chain kinase which is MLCK. Here occurs decrease in interaction between actin and myosin. What are actin and myosin? These are proteins which are present in the smooth muscle cells which are responsible for contraction. When the interaction between them occurs that causes contraction. Here there is decrease in interaction between actin and myosin. So, where there doesn't occur any contraction, so they will not cause any vasodilator effect, rather they will cause venodilator, which is dilation of the veins. Here, in venodilation, so because of venodilation effect, they cause this peripheral pooling of blood. Peripheral pooling of blood, which may ultimately lead to decrease in preload. What is preload? Preload is the end diastolic volume or the pressure when needed to the filling of ventricular blood. Now, this preload is the decrease in the end diastolic pressure and size, which leads to when there is decrease in end diastolic pressure or size, that decreases cardiac work. When the pumping, cardiac work is the pumping of blood by the heart. When the cardiac work decreases, we know there is oxygen demand, which is decrease in oxygen demand. So ultimately the target is achieved which is relief from ischemia as we said already anti-ischemic drugs. Now the conclusion over here these nitrates does the work like decreasing the preload and act as venodilators. Now 
they have some other actions too. They act on the arterioles, they cause a decrease into it, their total peripheral resistance, but this is not moreover important. And other work of this nitrate is redistribution of coronary blood flow to ischemic sites. You know that occurs some blockage in the ischemic sites. When these nitrates are introduced in that particular site, it does not send the blood directly or completely, rather they redistribute the blood to the ischemic sites. That is the, uh, what is the meaning of it. Now, nitrates, action of them, they are classified into short acting and long acting. First of all, short acting drugs are glycerol trinitrate and isosorbate dinitrate. These two drugs are usually given in sublingual, sublingual drugs. As they are short acting, they are given sublingually. Okay. Now, long acting, there are four types. Isosorbate dinitrate, isosorbate mononitrate, and erythritol tetranitrate, and penta erythritol tetranitrate. Here, these are oral drugs. These are mainly used in cases like chronic prophylaxis and angina pectoris. You know what is angina pectoris, right? So, now we'll move on to the indications and side effects. Indications. In what cases these nitrates are used? In cases like angina pectoris and acute coronary syndrome and myocardial ischemia and congestive heart failure. In case of acute coronary syndrome, usually this glycerol trinitrate is given three tablets in first. If their action is low, then they are given in IV, which is intravenous. Okay. Now, at last we come to the side effects. These side effects are fullness of head, throbbing headache. We have two types of headache, throbbing and pulsating headache. Here comes the throbbing headache. And third is flushing. As I said you, flushing is also known as butterfly syndrome, where occurs a pink or reddening of cheeks of a person's face and dizziness. This is the end of nitrates, their mechanism of action, side effects, indications, etc. Now let's discuss about the beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. They are mechanisms of action, side effects, contraindications and indications. For more understanding or more uh, needed infos, just check our antihypertensive drugs which are previous videos. First, what are beta blockers? The examples of beta blockers are, as we have discussed already in prior videos, these are metaprolol, propanolol and adenolol. What is their mechanism of action? They act on beta 1 which acts on the heart and which leads to decrease in heart rate which decreases contractility at last which leads to decrease in myocardial ischemia here what are the indications of them the indications are congestive heart failure atrial fibrillation which is uh, irregular heart rhythm of the atria so next is cardiac arrhythmia and contraindications in what conditions we should not give these drugs in case of asthma acute heart failure and peripheral vascular disease what are the side effects of beta blockers? The side effects, some of the side effects are bradycardia and CNS side effects which are insomnia and some other fatigue like that. Next, calcium channel blockers. Calcium channel blockers are classified into phenylalkylamines, benzothiazepines, dihydropyridines. Phenylalkylamines, example are verapamil and benzodiazepines are diltiazepine. Now, dihydropyridines are amlodipine and nifedipine. These are, these action are especially like, these are vasodilators which ultimately causes decrease of afterload and causes resulting in decrease in total peripheral resistance. Indications and contraindication. In case of stroke prevention, recurrent stroke prevention, these calcium channel blockers are used and in contraindication, these are used for, these are, these should not be used in congestive heart failure. And side effects are constipation, dizziness and headache. Thanks for watching our video friends. For more videos, subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Like, like, share, subscribe, easy way to go.